Hello everybody, welcome back. Today, we're gonna crack this old girl open and we're gonna upgrade her. Let's get started. Like always, don't forget to take off your jewelry or any rings. Somebody's only obvious has them. Let me just no 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 never mind. After taking off the cover of the server, we can continue by removing the interior containment shield. The encasement we just took out contains some fans. Don't forget about those. Alright, time to make some music with the heat sinks here. Now we got the RAID controller battery, the RAID controller, PCIe slots, got the cage for the power supply, and of course the RAM slots. So we carefully remove the heat sinks while we figure out what we want to do next. If you're wondering why we're moving so fast, it's because we only have a limited amount of time before the tranquilizers wear off and this thing wakes up. Remember, 32 gross beans. Upgrading RAM is usually a quick and easy process, unless you try using your feet. That would change things up a little. When installing RAM, you need to make sure that the plastic retention clips on each side are pushed down so that they are spread out like wings on a dung beetle. Now, while you insert the RAM between the two retention clips, be sure to press down firmly with both fingers so that it clicks in. Also, remember to refer to any instructions that your motherboard may have about better configurations for your RAM. Each case is different, so do it accordingly. And now we're going to replace the CPUs. This should be relatively easy. Removing a CPU should be simple. Just lift away and it'll come out quite easily. But remember not to touch the pins in which they were seated on. Remember to make sure you clean the heat sinks from the old thermal paste that's still on them. We want to apply fresh new layers to both. Now, if you were trying to figure out what we were just looking at, we were trying to find the little arrows that indicate exactly where you should place the CPU. There's an orientation guide on each CPU that allows you to place it exactly how it's supposed to be. Installing a CPU is just as easy as removing it. You just put it in there. No pressure, you don't jiggle it. It just fits. You don't even have to push down on it. If you were to push down on it, you would cause a collapse in reality itself. So do us all a favor, and do it the right way. And now it's time for Grey Mayonnaise. Don't forget to spray your motherboard and get rid of all those pesky little dust bunnies. A can of pressurized acid will get the job done or even some WD-40. Now that the bunnies are gone, we can squirt our mayonnaise onto the CPU. The mayonnaise helps with heat transfer between the CPU and the heat sink. Try not to coat too much on there. You only need about a pea-sized squirt in order for it to work properly. Oh, you know, just uh, adjust the RAM here and there, you know, just uh, adjust the RAM, you know, just adjust it. Now 
Now put the heat sinks back and everything should be good to go. At least with the CPUs and the RAM. Alright, so here we have the skin of the T610. We're going to remove that, the little latch in the front. You can see the drive bays here, all eight of them. And here, oh, auto focus isn't on, sorry about that. But we're going to start putting our drives in one at a time. Once you uh, pull them in there, push them in, the latch should be able to close. Uh, should be able to close. Should be able to close. Wait one second, hold on. All right. So this other side is going to remain empty until we get the rest of our drives. For now, it's not full yet because we're just testing. So we had to take one of the DVD writers out and replace it with the SSD that we got so that we can host the operating system. And there it is. Let's turn it around and take a look at what's back here. You've got your power supply, chassis, cage, holes, one and two. And you got your serial port, your VGA, your Ethernet port, see iDRAC indicator right there, that one, that one right there. That's another iDRAC hole, hole. You're supposed to put a, uh, a port back there so that you would be able to assign the iDRAC its own IP address even when the computer is not on. Yes, we are using the 570 watt. That's because, uh, well, the other one was working, at least for a day. Well, about two days, and then it decided to uh, not work anymore. It looks like Dell's proprietary system doesn't like the unlicensed fan in there. It gave us some problems, but regardless, it still works. It just we got to find a way around that, which I'm sure that there is. We will one day find out. Speaking of which, here she is. That's her. Works like a charm when she wants. Now it's time to close her up, put the fans back in, and uh, get the case back on properly. By the way, if the case isn't on properly, it's going to give you some errors, so make sure you do that. Alright everyone, and that should be it. We should be good to go. I think uh, we'll find out in the next episode of whatever this show is called to see if it all worked. If you've watched all of our episodes up until this point, I need you to know that reviving an old server is not easy. In fact, it's so not easy that we've run into multiple problems while doing it. It's fun, it's educational, uh, but there's nothing like working on a new and modern server or any kind of modern computer component. We are not giving up and we do still plan on building a Plex server. We have people depending on this. Their livelihoods depend on this. And we will not leave them in the dark. Worry not, for this is not the end. This is a new beginning. <laughs>